Hey, Bass family. Welcome back to Sounds Like Ben. Today, we've got a special edition for new bass players and about to be bass players. We're gonna talk about how to choose your first bass. Oh my God, it's so exciting. This video is gonna to cover topics like how much should you spend? Should you buy new or used? Should it be short scale or long scale? How many strings should it have? What are some things to watch out for when you're at the store to make sure that you're getting a bass that's going to meet your needs going forward? Cool, let's get into it. So the first question a lot of new players ask is how much should I spend to get my first starter bass? Uh, there are bases that range anywhere from $75 on the low end up to tens of thousands of dollars on the high end. I don't recommend starting at either of those extremes. Uh, I think that for between $300 and $500, there are a lot of great options for a first bass that are going to last you beyond the first month or two and not pose any major setup challenges. If you find that that is beyond your budget at this point, um, and I should mention that any base that's like $299, let's just call that a $300 base, that's fine. Um, but if that is beyond your budget at this point, what I think you should do is look for a used base uh, or a used version of one of those bases. Um, often that $500 base might be $300 used or that $300 base might be $200 used. The next question new players often have is, should I start with a four string or a five string? Now, if you go into your music store, you'll certainly see four string basses, uh, probably some five string basses, maybe even a six or more string bass. Now, some people are gonna say, start with a four string P bass and just stay with a four string P bass forever. Um, there have been a ton of hits recorded on that over the years, over the last 60 years it's been around. Um, and that's a, a fine point of view. What I'd say is think about the kind of music that you listen to. Um, a lot of what happens when you start playing is you want to learn to play the music that you like listening to. Let's say that you listen to some really heavy music that is detuned. Uh, the guitars might be in drop D or drop C sharp, something like that. Um, in those cases, it's helpful to just start with a five string. If that's the music you're going to be playing, you want to be able to have that lower range. Um, likewise, there are other styles of music um, that are dropping down into that low range. Let's say, I think if you were starting with gospel, I'd probably recommend starting on a five string there too. Um, not necessary. Again, any bass can play any style of music, but some are going to help you play that music a little more easily and find those notes more easily. Another question that comes up frequently is, should I start with a short scale bass or a standard scale bass? Now, if you don't know what that means, let me explain. A standard scale bass is 34 inches, and what that means is it's 34 inches from the nut to the bridge. And a short scale bass is 30 inches in scale length, which is you know roughly from about here, <laughs> right? Roughly the equivalent of this third fret to the bridge. Now, I like them both. I've done reviews on both. You can start on either. It won't hurt you either way. The fundamental concepts of playing the bass apply to both. If you're younger, say under 10 um, or under five feet tall, you may want to start on a shorter scale bass or if you're coming from guitar, you might find that more comfortable. That doesn't mean that a short scale bass is a kid's bass. Um, it's not like, let's say violin where, you know, little kids start off on kind of a 16th scale and graduate up to a full scale violin. You can start on any of these and plenty of full grown adults play short scale basses. Um, that said, 34 inches is the standard and you'll have a lot more selection in the standard size. All right. So you're ready to go bass shopping. Um, I will say first, try and bring a friend with you, bring a bass player friend. If you have one, if you don't, a guitar player. Um, if you can't find either of those, that's okay. I've got you covered. Here are a few things that you'll want to um, pay attention to. What we're really focusing on here is just making sure that the instrument um, can be properly set up so that it is easily playable, it'll stay in tune, and that it's not going to have uh, major issues that will cause you to spend more money uh, getting the instrument repaired. Now, Things can happen, They can. it's wood, so it adjusts. Um, most of these things are relatively minor, but I'm gonna tell you the specific things that you'll wanna look out for just to kind of avoid that hassle. When you find a bass you think you're interested in, one of the first things you'll want to do is play every note on that bass. And the reason that we're doing this is we're checking for high frets.
you'll want to repeat this process on every string. I'm going to force a fret to buzz so you can hear what it sounds like. If you find that you're able to play most notes without buzzing, but you're unable to play one fret without that buzzing, then chances are that instrument has a high fret. You could ask someone at the shop to look at it and verify. A lot of these things are fixable, but see if you can get something that doesn't need to be fixed from day one. Another area to look at is the bridge. So the bridge is this part of the instrument down here. And these are called the saddles. So the whole thing is the bridge. These are the saddles. If the action is very high, if it feels like the strings are farther off the fingerboard, um, pulled away. If the strings are further from the fingerboard than some of the other instruments you play, you want to look down at this bridge because these saddles will raise and lower. If you find an instance where the action is high, but the saddles are all the way at the bottom, then it's going to be hard to set up that instrument properly. It's going to need additional work. You'll also want to check the electronics to make sure that when you turn them, you don't hear any crackling sounds. Um, that usually indicates some kind of dirty pot. Um, the knobs should turn, but not just spin freely. They should have a spot where they stop. Um, these are all things that if, if you run into an issue, but you really love the instrument, ask someone at the store to fix it before you take it home. Um, probably, it, most instruments, this is not going to be a problem, but just watch out for it. Right? You don't want any crunching sounds as you're playing with the electronics. Okay, so we've talked about budget and number of strings and scale length. Um, we talked about a few mechanical things to watch out for, um, but here's really what's the most important part. Are you excited about the instrument? Does it make you feel really happy when you have it in your hands? Does it sound great to you? Does it feel better than all the others? Does it look awesome, right? I want you to love it. You're going to spend a lot of time with your first bass, learning to play it, bonding with it. A lot of people talk about their first instrument much like they talk about their first love. Um, you're always going to have that kind of warm spot in your heart for, for that bass. Thanks for watching. If you have any other questions about buying your first bass, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. All right, good luck and take it easy.